The helicopter has dropped you in the middle of a tropical jungle. You're to prove you can survive in the wild. The jungle is filled with all kinds of beasts. As you go, write down your answers. At the end, they'll help you find out if you have what it takes to survive for real. You're in a small glade before a dense jungle. You need to go through it to reach the first checkpoint. You only have a bottle of water, a box of matches, and a phone in a waterproof case. As soon as you take a step, a loud growl from behind makes you freeze. You see a big lion, and it's not happy to meet you. There's no point in running away. The lion is faster and also excellent at climbing trees. It's getting closer. What are you going to do? Raise your hands, scream, and throw a bottle of water at the lion to scare it. Open the bottle and pour water over the lion. Turn your back to it and not move. You've got 7 seconds. Never turn your back on a lion. The beast knows to be wary of humans, so start making noise and throw a bottle at it. This should help, but if the lion doesn't leave, then you should start slowly retreating. This time, the bottle helped you. The lion runs away, you take the bottle from the ground and go into the jungle. You make your way through the thicket and see two bear cubs. They growl so sweetly and seem to want to play with you. You think they're thirsty, so you open the bottle. What will you do next? Give them some water to drink. Take a photo with the cubs because they're so cute! Quickly escape from this place as fast as possible. Every second is important. You need to quickly run away from this place. If there are cubs here, then their mother is somewhere nearby. She will come at you if she sees you near her children. While running, you trip over a root and fall. It seems you managed to get away, but wait! Something big is coming towards you from the right. You turn your head and see a huge grizzly bear. It growls and stands up on its hind legs. What to do now? Get up and quickly run away. Climb the nearest tree and wait for the bear to leave. Pretend to be unconscious and don't move. The bear is getting closer. Decide now! The bee seems clumsy but runs very fast and is excellent at climbing trees. In case of the grizzly, you need to lie down and freeze, proving that you don't mean any harm. The bear sniffs at you and seems to leave, but don't get up just yet. It can stay nearby and look at you to make sure you really are unconscious. After 10 minutes, you open your eyes and feel the bear is gone. Now, we'll ignore the fact that bears don't live in jungles and continue our adventure. You're making your way through the jungle again. You can see the river ahead, but before you reach it, you need to solve the problem with a pack of wolves. Wolves in a jungle, never mind. They're looking at you as their prey, slowly surrounding you. Your choice of actions? Don't let them surround you. Press your back against a tree, then quickly climb it. Use matches to set fire to the grass. The fire will scare away the wolves. Scream and splash water in different directions. Wolves are afraid of fire, but now you don't have enough time to make it. Don't let them surround you. Any tall tree will save you. First, press your back against it, then quickly climb up before the wolves get to you. Night falls. You're sitting in a tree. The wolves are tired of waiting for you and leave. You go down, build a fire to warm up, and cook food. By the way, what will you have? Berries. You found ripe purple and red ones. They look delicious and seem juicy. Ants. You've stumbled upon a large anthill. Mushrooms. They don't look much like fly agaric, which means you can eat them. So, what's on the menu tonight? Surprisingly, ants are now the most edible thing for you. You can't eat berries and mushrooms if you don't know what they are. They may be poisonous. After a hearty dinner with your ant, (laughs) You wait for dawn and continue on your way. The jungle ends and you come out on a wide green clearing with a large lake nearby. You carefully tread through the open area and suddenly hear a rapid rumbling in the distance. You look around and see a wild boar. It's rushing right at you, snorting and roaring. What will you do? Run towards the boar shouting. It will confuse the animal. Lie down on the ground and pretend to be unconscious. Run back to the forest and climb a tree. 
Hurry up, you don't have much time! You need to climb the nearest tree. Wild boars will eat anything they can. So you climb a tree, but the boar is waiting for you on the ground. An hour passes. A second. A third. The boar doesn't even think to leave. Fortunately, a bear appears nearby. It scares the boar away and doesn't notice you. You wait until the animals are out of sight, then climb down the tree. You finally come to a lake. You need to swim across it. The good news? You're a good swimmer. The bad news is that there's a shark in this lake. Freshwater shark, huh? Hey, let's just go with it. You dive into the water and swim to the opposite bank. On the other side, there's a small pier with a moored old fishing boat. Where will you go? To the pier with a boat or to the sandy bank? Don't get closer to the fishing boat. It gives off the smell of fish that attracts the shark. Most likely, it lurks near the pier. You swim to the bank and see a fin next to the boat. It turns and starts quickly toward you. The shark has spotted you! What will you do? Try to swim to the shore as quickly as possible. Don't swim away, turn to the shark and move very slowly. Dive underwater and start waving your arms to scare the shark. Well, you need to stop. If you start swimming away, the shark will think you're its prey. Take a deep breath and try not to make unnecessary movements. The shark swims away and you calmly reach the shore. It's only a short distance to your destination now. There's a swamp on your way. You walk around it, then notice some green mud slowly moving towards you. It's an alligator. It comes out of the swamp and wants you to become its lunch. What will you do? Quickly run away? Lie on the ground face down and don't move. Jump on the alligator's back to scare it. Well, alligators are fast animals, but they're only good on short distances. So don't hesitate and immediately run away. The alligator won't even try to catch up if you're far away. Ahead, you can see a flag stuck in the ground. This is your destination point. You happily run towards it and hear a hiss. You stop and stare at the grass. Within it, you notice a small snake. It seems venomous, but you don't want to check it. What will you do? Find a long stick and point it at the snake so it lashes out of the stick instead of you? Move to a safe distance and get around the snake. Hiss loudly in response to scare the snake away. The simplest answer is the most correct. The snake won't jump if you retreat. You step aside and run back to the flag. Finally, you have completed your mission and survived. In the sky, you see a helicopter flying by. It seems they don't see you. It almost flies away, and you need to do something to make the pilot notice you. You have matches, water, and your phone. What are your actions? You don't have time to build a fire, you need to use the phone screen. Catch a ray of sunlight and point it towards the helicopter. Yeah, you've been spotted! The helicopter picks you up and you check your points during the flight. Zero to two points, you're nothing but prey for wild animals. But after this video, your chances of survival increase. Three to seven points, not every animal will dare to come at you, but you still need to be careful. 8 to 11 points. You have proven that the human stands at the top of the food chain. Um, just be extra careful around those jungle grizzly bears. You wake up in a room with no windows or doors. The ceiling is extremely high, and the only way out is a closed hatch at the very top. Suddenly, the room starts filling with water. You've checked everywhere. There's no way to turn it off. You know that help is on the way, but they won't be here for at least 5 minutes. You're pretty sure the entire room will be flooded in two. You definitely can't hold your breath for that long. You look around and find three objects. A straw, some rope, and a bucket. Only one of them can actually save you in this situation. Which one should you choose, and how is it going to help? You should take the bucket. 
flip it over and put your head inside when the water gets to head height. You'll have your very own small air pocket to help you breathe until help arrives. Uh-oh, you're in a building that just caught on fire. You need to escape, but the fire just keeps spreading and spreading. You're feeling dizzy, and the smoke is making it hard to see. And the heat? It's insane! Suddenly, you see three paths that lead outside, but it's not going to be so simple. There's no fire near the first exit, but it's on the opposite side of the burning room. The second exit is right in front of you, but the upper part is completely covered in flames. The final exit is through the kitchen. There's shattered glass everywhere, but the flames are barely touching it, and the door is wide open. Which exit should you take? Even though the first exit isn't on fire, an indoor blaze is totally unpredictable. Flames can pop up out of nowhere. Going through a kitchen is never a good idea in a fire. There might be exposed gas lines in there. Your best bet is to go for the closest path and crawl your way to safety. Well, you're stranded in the middle of a desert and are in desperate need of water. You crawl along, trying to find any source to hydrate yourself. As nighttime rolls around, the wind gets stronger and it starts to get cold. You sit down next to a tree. How are you going to find water in the middle of a desert? Grab two of the largest tree branches you can find. And then, rip your outer shirt and stretch it out over them, kind of like a sail. Shove the two branches into the sand to anchor them. The water in the atmosphere will get caught on the cloth and drip down for you to collect. Well, you're tied up on some railroad tracks and can't wriggle free. There's a train heading your way, and it doesn't look like it's stopping. Oh well. If you stretch your arms out, you can just reach a lighter, a small pocket razor, and a can of oil. Which can you use to escape? Pour the oil on the ropes holding you down. It'll act as a lubricant, and you'll be able to wriggle free. Taylor finished another awesome ice fishing session. He packed up his gear and walked back home with his dinner. Halfway back to the car, he realized he was being followed by a hungry cougar. It started chasing him. Taylor was so close to his car, but the cougar was gaining on him. What should he do? He should fling the fish to the side to distract the cougar. Then he should ditch all his gear, it's just slowing him down. That way, he's got a chance of making it to the car before he turns into cougar chow. Well, you find yourself in a pitch black room. The room is huge and there are many hallways and corridors leading to unknown places. You need to find your way out before the room starts heating up like an oven. You only have two minutes. You can feel some pipes on the wall but nothing else. How can you save yourself? When the pipes start heating up, they'll probably turn red. It'll already be super hot by then, but you'll have just enough time to figure out the layout of the room and find a way to escape. Angela decided to go for a nice walk in the forest. Mm -hmm. About an hour in, she tripped and spilled all her water. No problem, right in front of her was a tiny lake, and close by, a small stream and a cactus. Which one should you use to get herself a refreshing drink of water? She should head for the stream. That lake isn't moving. That means it probably has bacteria living in it. And a single cactus won't have enough water to quench your thirst. Even though the stream is pretty small, moving water is almost always the safest option. What are those things? Ah, oh, paw prints! Those are bear tracks heading to the forest, a wolf print coming out of the forest, and some elk prints heading toward a lake. Well, what's the best place to go if you're not into the whole being eaten thing? Think fast! The bear going into the forest probably scared that large dog off. Oh, you thought those were wolf prints? Mm, not likely. Wolves mostly travel in packs. The bear is most likely chasing the elk, so they'll both end up at the lake. That means the forest's safe for now. You're stuck in a well in a small village, and the water's already up to your knees. There's a rope leading to the mouth of the well, but it's definitely not strong enough to hold you. You look around and find a bucket, some clothing, and a lighter. How do you escape?
Shove the clothes in the bucket, tie the bucket to the rope, and light the clothes on fire. Then quickly hoist the bucket up. Chances are, in such a small village, someone will see the smoke and run over to help you. Kate finished her morning hike and decided it was time to go home. She saw a vintage jeep parked by the hiking path. While she was admiring it, a huge grizzly appeared in front of her. The bear didn't seem that interested in her, for now. But that could change any second. There was a large screwdriver on the floor by the jeep. What can she do to make sure the bear won't be interested in her? She can puncture the gas tank with the screwdriver and douse herself in gasoline. That way, the bear wouldn't be so interested in her scent. Eric was out camping and he needed some light to see in the dark. He reached into his tent, but his flashlight wasn't working for some reason, and his phone only had 10% battery. He looked around and saw a bottle of water, an empty sandwich bag, his hiking boots, and a pillow. What can he do to make more light? He can take his phone and put it right next to the water bottle. The water inside the bottle will diffuse the light, making it much brighter. Adrian and Jack went rock climbing all day, then realized it was time to head home. After a long walk through the woods trying to get to their car, they realized they were totally lost. They'd never been in these woods before. They didn't have a clue what to do. What's worse, Jack collapsed from exhaustion and couldn't take another step. Adrian tried to lift him up, but Jack was too heavy. Night was approaching. He tried to call for help, but neither phone had any signal. His only choice was to venture out and seek help. He checked both gear bags and found a small pick hammer, some ropes, some sturdy locks, and a harness. What should he do? Adrian should put on the harness and tie all the ropes together to make one huge long one. Then he should tie one end to Jack and one end to his harness. That way, if he got lost in the woods, he'd be able to find his way back to Jack. That's one long rope. Nora's family was out for the day, and she was going to surprise them all with a triple chocolate raspberry cake. Right after plugging in her mixer, she heard a small pop, a fizz, then the electricity shorted out, and her precious mixer broke out in flames. Her phone was in the other room. Quick, help her! She's got to stop the flames from getting worse while she sprints over to get her phone and call for help. What should she do? She could take some flour and dump it all over the mixer. It'll tame the fire and buy her enough time to call for help. Roy went out for a small walk in the forest right behind his house. He was having a great time chucking stones at trees and thump. He launched the stone right into a beehive. A swarm of bees flew out and started chasing him. His house was pretty far away by this point, and there were tons of bushes and shrubs in his way. There was a huge open field in front of him with a deep lake in the middle. Where should he go to escape the angry bees? Jumping into the water to escape from a swarm of bees doesn't work. They'll just wait right above you and sting you when you resurface to breathe. The trick is to run as far away as you can. Head for the house and shut the door, Roy. Two couples are about to get married. The hall is full of guests. The bride looks stunning in these long white dresses and the groom seems to be absolutely happy. All of a sudden, one of the guests noticed there's something wrong with one of the couples. Can you guess what? Mary and Alex have no reflections at all. Look at this decorated mirror behind them. They must be vampires. I wonder how Mary did her makeup. Samantha and Julie wanted to have a peaceful Sunday afternoon. They decided to have a hot air balloon ride and headed to the park. The instructor offered them to choose which one they wanted to ride. A blue one, a green one, or a yellow one. Samantha loves the blue one. No surprise, look at her clothes. And Julie wants to go for the green one. Which girl isn't very attentive? Samantha, the color isn't that important. There are no sandbags. You want to have a safe ride, don't you? In one of the galaxies, there's Planet Ping. There are many people, but few animals. Only hens and roosters live there. They can be of three different colors, pink, red, and yellow. Andrew went to that planet to see his friends for the weekend. 
And while he was walking down the street, he saw three bird couples in love. No bird can be with the partner of the same color. Can you guess the color of the partner of the red hen? It's the yellow rooster. The red hen can't go out with the red one. And the pink rooster, as you see, is madly in love with the yellow hen. Emily's aunt has bought a bottle of perfume for her niece's birthday. Sadly, she couldn't keep it because Helga, her sister, is terribly allergic to perfumes. Emily brought it back to her aunt, who bought it for $65. The old lady sold it to someone for $80. Then, suddenly, she remembered she had another niece, so she got it back for $70. Sally, the forgotten niece, turned out to be allergic too, so the auntie had to sell it again for $60. Did she make any profit? Yep, she made $5 and grabbed a large latte for them. A genius invented a watch he thought no one else but him could read. A minute on his watch lasts an hour, and an hour lasts a minute. The watch shows the right time twice a day. Can you read it? It's 5.30, just like it is. The genius changed the hand placing the hour hand instead of the minute hand, and vice versa. Well, that doesn't seem that genius. Somebody was stealing important documents from the office. The guards didn't see anyone, neither did the secretary. The boss decides to install the security cameras to find out who was doing it. They checked the footage carefully and found out who it was. Can you guess? It's the man in the white shirt. When he went out of the office, he had two folders in his hand. At the beginning of the day, he had only one. Jamie wanted to know if his wife cheated on him. Mm. He wasn't sure if she actually went on that business trip in Australia. He asked her to send a selfie, which she did. When he saw the photo, he knew exactly that his wife was lying to him. How did he guess? Well, it's January in Canada, and the streets are full of snow. How come there's snow in Australia? It's supposed to be summer there. Everybody knows that an old witch lives in this spooky old house. Nobody really wants to meet her. Mary is in this house right now, but she seems to be alone. How come? Who said witches can't have the name Mary? Back in the day, she was young and beautiful too. Jack has a small shop that sells socks. One day, he decided to attract more people and launched an advertisement. Socks for free. Many people came there, but all the customers had to pay, even though the socks were free. Why? Jack would only give the left sock to his customers. They looked nice, and people wanted to buy it. Who needs only one sock after all? A man was driving his car all the way from New York to LA. At the end of the trip, he discovered that one of his car's tires had been punctured from the very beginning. Still, he reached his destination successfully. How is it possible? The punctured tire was a spare one. You're trapped in a room that's slowly getting filled with water coming from a faucet in the wall. There's no windows in the room and the door is sealed shut. You have a mop and a big bucket. So how are you going to get yourself out of this one? Come on, just turn the faucet off. Now it's better. There are five girls in the room. Nicole is talking on the phone. Kimberly is reading. Jessica is playing hide-and-seek, and Melody is tidying up. What's Sarah doing? Sarah is playing hide-and-seek with Jessica. Five, six, seven. Five, six. Which number is missing? A small hint. It's not seven. You have seven seconds to do the math.
number 8 is missing. The subsequent number of 567 is 568. Sally works as a barista. This morning, she dropped a cup full of coffee. Luckily, her white shirt wasn't stained, but it took a while to clean up the mess. How come? There were coffee beans in the cup. They ended up right under the counter. Imagine you've just entered a pitch black room. There's an oil lamp, a newspaper, and some kindling wood inside the room. You only have one match. You have to make a tough choice. What to light first? The oil lamp is definitely a good choice, but it's still incorrect. First of all, you'll need to light the match. After the bank had been robbed, the police found the money in the park among cacti. After the police officers arrested all the suspects, they almost immediately figured out who the bank robber was. Can you do the same? This guy on the left has scratches left by cacti all over his body. There are six glasses in a row on the table. The first three are filled with orange juice, and the other three are empty. Your task is to make full and empty glasses alternate by moving just one glass. How can you do it? Take the second glass and pour the juice in the fifth glass. Dennis was at home watching TV. All of a sudden, his wife's super expensive vase fell and broke in their bedroom. He ran into the room in time to see a stranger jump out the window and run away. Dennis tried to chase him, but his glasses fogged up because of the cold. That's why he couldn't identify who it was. When the police arrived, they listened to his story and immediately knew he was lying. The man made the story up to not tell his wife he'd broken the vase. How did they know this? Anyone who wears glasses know they don't fog up when you go from a warm room to the cold outdoors. It's the other way around. Adam Nixon, who didn't really like modern art, rushed into the city gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet the manager of the gallery <laughs> thanked Mr. Nixon for his actions. How come? Adam was a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and saved many more exhibits. Jane was on a hike in Africa when she decided to cross a bridge to admire the view. When she was in the middle of the bridge, she heard something moving behind her. She turned and saw a huge hungry lion waiting for her. She turned to the other side. There were giant snakes. The water to her left was filled with hungry piranhas. Where should she go? She should jump into the lake. Piranhas don't live in lakes, especially in Africa. They live in South America. Look closer. These are just some harmless fish. Two fathers and two sons found three oranges. When they shared them, everyone got a whole orange. How come? There were three people, grandfather, father, and son. Once upon a time in a spooky forest, there were seven trolls who were all brothers. They were all born three years apart. The youngest troll is 100 years old now. How old is the oldest brother? He's 118, looking good for that age. A man wakes up in a place he's never been before. He rushes to the exit and sees two doors. When he opens the first door, he sees that the hall is made of magnifying glass. The scorching hot sun fries anyone who enters in no time. Behind the second door, a huge dragon breathing with fire is sleeping. But anyone who enters this hall risks waking it up immediately. How did he escape safely? He needed to wait for dusk. 
There's no sun and he can easily get out of that place. Mr. Jones was watching TV when the doorbell rang. It was a guy who introduced himself as Lincoln. He said that he was a member of a volunteer group. They were collecting donations to save the rarest species of dodo birds. But Mr. Jones didn't believe him and called the police. Why? There are no more dodo birds. They went extinct in the 17th century. Arwen, a rich man's only son, visited his cousin Richie. They were talking about sports and drinking tea. Suddenly, Arwen stopped breathing and fell to the floor. Richie called the doctor who said that Arwen had been poisoned. Detective Callum arrived and started the investigation. Soon, he accused Richie of poisoning his cousin. How did Richie manage to do that? Arwen was the only one who drank his tea sweet. The poison was in the sugar. Eloise was studying in the library. She went to the bathroom and left her things on the table. When the girl returned, she realized someone had stolen her cell phone. She called the police, and they questioned the other three students who were in the library at that time. Bernard said, I left the library right after Eloise. I wanted to get a drink from the vending machine. I didn't touch her things. Beth said, I was studying the whole time and didn't even see anything. Serenity said, I was in another part of the library and didn't come close to Eloise's table. Who stole the girl's phone? It was Bernard. He said he'd left to get a drink from the vending machine. But look! There are no drinks in there, only snacks. Mm. Samantha and her daughter Avery went to the lake to spend some time together. They found a nice spot and sat down there. A bit later, Samantha remembered she'd left her camera in the car and went to get it. When she returned, her daughter was gone. The woman called the police, and they started to look for the girl. There were three people nearby, and the police officers interrogated them all. Benjamin said, I was walking nearby and saw a girl sitting by the lake, but I didn't do anything to her. Genevieve said she hadn't even seen the girl or her mother. And Victoria said she hadn't seen them either, but she heard someone screaming. Who should the officers arrest? They should arrest Genevieve. Look, she's wearing Avery's scarf. Brian called the police early in the morning. He said that the night before, he and his girlfriend Estelle had been watching a scary movie together. Estelle was afraid to go home, so she stayed at his place. She was having a bad dream with zombies chasing after her, and she didn't wake up in the morning. The guy didn't know what had happened, but the police arrested him, claiming he was guilty. Why? The guy said his girlfriend hadn't woke up in the morning. Then how did he know what she had been dreaming about? Theodore came from New York to his hometown, Chicago, to spend a week with his father. Three days later, the father called the police and said his son had poisoned himself. The police examined Theodore's things to check if there was anything suspicious. After that, they took the father to the police station for further interrogation. What seems suspicious to them? The officers found a return ticket from Chicago to New York. Theodore wouldn't have bought this ticket if he hadn't been planning to return to New York. Esme was having her usual walk in the forest. And you know what? She got lost again! After wandering around for a couple of hours, she finally found the witch's house. Esme asked the witch to show her the way back home. The witch wanted to make Esme her maid, but she had a problem. She was planning a vacation and wanted to go fishing. 
Her fishing rod was 13 feet long, and one was only allowed to take things no longer than 12 feet on the train. The witch promised Esme that if the girl found a solution, she'd let her go. What can Esme recommend? Esme was very good at geometry. She advised the witch to put the rod in a 12 by 5 foot box. Diagonally, it fit perfectly. On a Sunday evening, Mrs. Collins was having tea at her friend's house. Her friend suddenly said that she had seen one of Mrs. Collins' daughters in the mall that day. Mrs. Collins got angry because all of the girls were grounded. She asked which daughter it was, but her friend couldn't tell. She wasn't wearing her glasses when she was at the mall. When Mrs. Collins returned home, she asked the girls what they had been doing the whole day. Abigail said she'd spent the day reading. Brianna said she had stayed at school after classes to study a bit more. Charlotte said that she had been practicing for her upcoming piano concert. Who lied? Brianna. It's Sunday. There's no school. A young girl, Tenley, was brought to the hospital after being poisoned. But the examination showed that Tenley hadn't eaten or drunk anything that day. Her sister, Kennedy, said she didn't know anything about the accident. Tenley's friend, Ruby, said, We were at school when Tenley felt bad. Tenley's boyfriend, Archie, said, I haven't even talked to her today. How was Tenley poisoned, and who did it? The girl hasn't eaten anything, but she has some lipstick on. That's what contains poison. And the only person who had access to Tenley's room that day was her sister, Kennedy. There was a car accident in a tunnel. The police suspected that one of the drivers, Owen, had fallen asleep behind the wheel. But Owen denied it. I just couldn't see well because of the rainstorm, he said. The police didn't believe him and immediately arrested the man. Why? The accident happened in a tunnel. It couldn't rain there. Someone in the town was stealing cars. Every time a car disappeared, its owner would get a message from an anonymous number. In each message, there were two emojis that didn't make any sense. The police tracked the number, and the geolocation led to three houses. They questioned the owners, Mr. Walson, Mrs. Coleman, and Mr. Woolridge. Can you tell who the car thief is? The emojis seem to make sense after all. They're a wall and a father with a son. Combine them and you'll get Walson. So Mr. Walson must be the one stealing cars. Now let's play the game Who's Less Smart? It's early morning. Tom and Joseph are driving their teenage children to school. Who is not smart? Joseph. His son is not in the car. His father has probably forgotten about the poor guy. Annie and Emma are volunteering in an animal shelter. Annie is feeding the cats, and Emma is washing the dogs. Who is not smart here? Annie. She's giving dog food to the cats. Logan and Anthony are both having job interviews at 4 p.m. Logan is packing some food, and Anthony is ironing his best suit. Who's not smart? Anthony, look at the clock. The interview is going to start in 5 minutes, and he's still at home. Logan is at home, too. But there's still another hour till his interview begins. Noelle and Gabriella are cleaning the house. 
Noelle is listening to music while vacuum cleaning the living room. And Gabrielle is washing the windows. Who is not being smart? Noelle, the vacuum cleaner isn't plugged in. Skylar and Autumn are both going on summer vacation. Skylar is going to Spain, and Autumn is visiting her sister in Chile. Who is not smart? Autumn. She's packing shorts and swimwear, but she won't need them because it's winter in Chile. Both Josh and Amelia didn't sleep well because their neighbor's dog had been barking all night. Amelia asked Josh to take out the trash while she was making some coffee for them. Who is not smart? Josh. Instead of the trash, he's taken out the bags with old toys they've collected to donate. Janine and Teresa are making dinner for their families. Who is not smart? Well, they both have a problem. Janine is putting out a fire with water. And Teresa has a mouse in her kitchen and an ant in the dough.